and welcome back to The Sesh. I am Kendall. And I'm Janelle. And we are here with another week full of spicy topics and fun mm. for you guys. Entertainment for you. Yep. And us. I mean, yeah. this show is extremely entertaining for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is definitely one of the highlights of my week. 100%. For sure. Yes. Um, we are going to be getting into some spicy topics, as always. We're mm-hmm. going to be talking about a few things. We're going to be talking about Kanye West, mm-hmm. the Try Guys, mm-hmm. and the Try X Try Guy. Yep. Um, we're going to be... Kind of and his little... and their wives, oh, try wives, right? Try, I didn't really even know there was a thing. The whole try world is a real yeah, try. try universe. Well, now it's really try, like T R I, guys. Mm. Three try. Oh, uh, mm, nice. you're right. It is. It like that. almost was helpful for them in a sense. Yeah. It like makes their name has two meanings now. Honestly, yeah, they it's try a good things marketing and tr- yeah. move for them. Really, <laughs> maybe that's the whole. No, just kidding. <laughs> that's the whole reason that was they the whole did reason. this. <laughs> Um, anyway, we also are going to be talking about Logan Paul and Bad Bunny. Yeah. We're going to be talking about other Paul, mm-hmm. Jake Paul, Jacques Poul. Might be Remember fighting that back in the day? Mike Tyson, Jacques Poul. Jacques Poul. Oh, those were fun times. I know, those were fun times. Seems like a, such a long time ago. I'm going back to calling him Jacques. <gasps> um, wait, this is our 100th episode, by the way. Oh, well, <laughs> I literally just remember. <laughs> Howdy, hey. <laughs> That's Welcome exciting. to our 100th episode. That's nuts. I know. 100, 100 apps, episodes people. of this. Mm-mm. Damn. Dude, back when we came up with this idea. No, we had no idea. No, we were like, gonna call it the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, we really were. That was Which, actually going yeah, to be That a was thing. like one of the front runners. And they were like, maybe that's not a good idea to brand ourselves yeah. after bullshit. Yeah, but, exactly. So, um, anyways. Well, thanks for joining us. If for some reason, well, not for some reason, I'm sure there's a handful of you guys that have been here since episode one. And we appreciate you so much. Yes. Thank you. We do. Seriously, this is a good time to say that. Yeah. Um, especially those of you who have been like really interactive with the show, yeah. uh, very supportive of us through ups and downs, mm-hmm. you know, my recent leave, like mm-hmm. still just sticking it through. Like we really appreciate you guys. And just we wanted to say thank you to everyone who has sent us mail. I know this oh, is a random yeah. note, but this I just note, but yeah. have been wanting to find time to thank those of you who have sent us just like care packages and letters and homemade nice things stuff. to all four of us. Yeah. So kind makes our day every time we get something like that. So yeah, you guys are really talented, you. really sweet. And you do not have to do that. Like, please Mm-mm. don't like just you watching this or listening to our yeah. show, even leaving a comment, something like that is more than we could ask for and yeah we just really appreciate you guys yeah we love our sessies yeah it's such a fun small community especially because you know our other shows have such huge audiences especially my channel that it's really nice to have a more intimate setting Mm -hmm. and to be able to recognize people in the comments oh yeah oh i know this person or they'll send us mail and we're like oh i know you from the comments it is crazy like there's Mm -hmm. at least probably 20 usernames that comment on the regular Mm -hmm. that i literally feel like i know you guys and then you like we talk on Twitter and stuff. It's the coolest thing. Yeah. So doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for a hundred ups, guys. Here we are. Oops. Going Ooh. strong. Yep. Yeah, that's right. We ain't um, stopping anytime soon. So yeah, we have a good episode ahead. A lot to dive into. Yeah. Before we do that, guys, what? it is October. Yes. Should we do something for Halloween this year? Ah. On the show. What do we think? Yes, we shall. Well, we we were debating like if we should do a group. Costume. Like themed costume or just right. surprise each other. I'm voting just surprise. I'm voting surprise. Like too. let's do a random like pick what you want and show up. Oh, it's so Halloween's so stressful. Does anyone else find the costume? World no, because so... I don't participate. I know. So you normally <laughs> just aren't stressed. No. But when I whenever I try to participate, I get so stressed out. Do you have your costume picked for what you guys are gonna be as a family with Holly? You don't have to say yes. it, but Yes, I do. We have two costumes. Yay. We will be debuting those on Mile Higher. I'm still trying to figure out my sesh costume. I have some ideas, but then the more I've thought on them, I'm like, maybe that's lame. Mm. Yeah, I have a few in mind. I'm just not a very creative person. So anything that's too involved, like creating a costume that's a a real DIY situation, that's kind of out of my league. Well, here's my problem, because I'll think of these fun things in my head to Mm -hmm. quote unquote make. And then if I get the supplies and take the time to do it and it doesn't turn out how I envision it in my Mm -hmm. head, which it won't because I suck, I'll get pissed. And then I'll be like, fuck this. I don't need. Why did I spend my time doing it? Yeah. So. (laughs) And then you show up as like a cat or something. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) Like, man, I'll just wear a onesie. Right. (laughs) Yeah. The whole Halloween thing is stressing me out because I also want to do an in-office Halloween party. We have about how many people work here now? Uh, Like 10. I think including you guys for a little Halloween bash, you know, I'm like, let's have a Halloween party, but it's not, it doesn't align with our recording days. So it'd be another day of dressing up. And when is Halloween? Uh, It's on a a Monday. Monday. Yeah. 
But then we can't like record the sesh on Halloween on the Monday, like for a Halloween because it doesn't no. go up till after. So we'd have to do all our Halloween recordings the week before. Yeah. And then we'd be having a Halloween party, making people in the office dress up a week early, so which I'm is like, like why? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then it's like sometimes I'm like, oh, do people really want to dress up? Mm -hmm. Like, but I want to have an office Halloween party. That's like my dream. Really? I love the show The Office. We all know. Oh, yes. They always have their little company parties and they look so fun. And I want to do that. You just want the, this office to be like the yes. office. Yes. Which leads me to my next point ah. for today. Okay. I have a challenge for you. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Okay. So last night I was watching The Office for like the fifth time. That's it? Mm-hmm. That's it. That's, I'm surprised you haven't watched it more. I'm surprised too, but normally I give myself a few years in between so I can really enjoy it. Yeah. Although I just restarted after watching it this whole year. I just, as soon as it ended, I started from the beginning. Oh my gosh. Because, well, now there's these fan, super fan episodes. So it's all this <gasps> cut out stuff. Oh, And they were slowly re-releasing it. It's so good. Anyway, I'm laying there watching it and I'm thinking like, I can't believe Janelle hates this so much. You're just such an office hater, you, <sighs> but you've never really experienced it. And it makes me sad because I constantly think, Janelle would think this is funny. <laughs> Janelle would like this. And I would like to challenge you to watch The Office and I will literally pay you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Say yeah. no more. I what, mean, what does that mean? Name your price. Sorry, Josh. I can't email you back. I'm doing work. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> it would be an extracurricular. <laughs> but you could come here and like tell us your thoughts on it as you go along. I thought it could would be kind of a fun series. anyone but you find that interesting? Oh, yes. Dude. I know yes. everyone loves The Office. Comment below if you would like to see Janelle actually get okay, The Office. See, a try. here's the thing because obviously it's very popular and people say, like, oh, you don't like dry humor. That's not true. I love that kind of like weird yeah. dry humor. But I know I've you tried do. watching it and I just am like, something's missing well, like, you, in my brain to understand. How far did you get into it? Not far. Like, that's my just other the problem. Pilot? That's my other problem is if things don't catch my attention span and like, 30 seconds I, I don't i don't do it see and that's hard because the first couple episodes and the first season of the office is kind of different it really evolves they completely rewrote michael scott's character beyond season one so he was kind of this asshole and not as likable as yeah. he ends up being and but that's hard to be like because there are so many shows we're like oh well season one through three sucked but after you get to season four it's good i'm like who the fuck? But it's has just a couple time episodes. For that. The season one is but quick, and it was good. their practice run. And How long is it each episode? So much better, like twenty, 20 minutes, minutes or it's something. Like a sitcom type yeah. of thing. Easy to watch. You would really like. I'm telling you, if you get far enough into it, you're gonna be hooked, and then you're just gonna want to watch it. At least that's what I think is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I think you should. I'm serious. How I'll pay many? you like, how much do you want? I'll pay you whatever. <laughs> you have to watch this. I cannot live without well, my best friend and my cousin watching my favorite, your favorite show. show. Yeah. Because there's, you can never get our okay. jokes. How many? Sydney, have you seen The Office? I can't remember. Um, I've seen parts of it. I haven't like watched it fully through though. Are you Both into of it? you need to start. I mean, I'm, I think I could get into it, but I, the first like season was a little bit. Yeah. Duh. It is. But that's how, how many episodes are in the bad. first season? I don't know. Let me see. <laughs> how many episodes? <laughs> how many seasons are there? Um, there's quite a few, right? Oh, I forget exactly how. I want to say like nine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, people are fucking stands of this show. So obviously they're doing something right. And I'm confused. There's only six in the first oh, really? season. Yeah. Only six. 20 only minutes six. each. There, it's a quick six commitment. divided by three. So that would take two hours to watch the and first season. And there's only nine. Se well, there's nine total seasons. Yep. Nine seasons. Yep. Got it. I think so. Okay. Um, hmm. Wait, let me look up. When did it start? It says 2000, what is that, 2005? I was in like sixth mm -hmm. grade. Yeah, I think like 2004 or five, yeah. Okay, so how many episodes do you want me to watch between now and when we record next? I mean, however, I will be happy with any, <laughs> I've all, any watching. Okay, okay. What but if, you have to get past season one. Of, you have to at least watch the first three seasons or I'm not paying you out. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Now the rules are changing. <laughs> because the first season, I don't want you to be like, oh, it sucked. Because I know it's like not as good. But it gets so much better. Like so much better. You have to see it in your life. It's like such a great part of this earth. Now, and you need to see it. What would you say that between between The Office and Parks and Rec? Because I know you also no. love Parks. Parks no. and Rec's got and nothing on the office. And I Parks and Rec because you told me that I yeah. remind you of Ron Swanson. You used to. <laughs> <laughs> but then I watched and I was She's like, She's got what? some Ron tendencies. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ron's fucking awesome. 
Well, but it has nothing to be on honest, it. Parks and Rec, yeah, it's not even close. Okay. I mean, I tried to watch Parks and Rec again this summer and I was kind of like, oh, this isn't really that good. Really? It's just nothing compared to The Office. It's a similar, people like to compare the two because they're both documentary style. Yeah. But The Office feels real. It feels like they're vlogging the entire time. Mm. You can see all the camera angles. It's really interesting as someone who works with cameras and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I just you know think what? you should do it. I think you, know you know make what's your life so better. crazy is that I've I have memorized the little you know theme song of it without ever even seeing it. Let's hear it. Um, now I don't. Now that I'm on the spot, start me off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, it's so great. You need to be part of the hype. I'm telling you, you need to know. You need to know. Okay, so what if one day when we're all office stands here uh, for Halloween down the line, we dress up as office members, oh, characters? Uh, that, my life would be complete. And who would you be? Oh, shit. <gasps> Damn. I don't know. I would want to be your favorite. The, yeah. Oh, yeah your that's favorite? just so hard. You don't have a, like, I, a I don't, favorite character? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really so hard. Some of the... Um, lesser known characters are some of my favorites like yeah i really like creed and i mean there's no use talking yeah. to you about well, this I know, you like, know who they are. Of, like what's the one of the main people like names? dwight yeah and I know, michael uh, yeah that sounds familiar pam and jim oh i almost oh, I love you know what ryan Howard. i almost got you what's that guy's his name is brian ba- bumgarner that guy who's that guy the bald guy kevin is that Kevin? Oh yeah, Kevin. Okay, so Kevin when Malone. I was um for your birthday when I was doing the cameo for when I got Zach, I was looking at and everyone yeah. and he was on there, but he was like three hundred mm-hmm. bucks. He's expensive. But I was about to get you. I really wanted Dude, to. Dude, maybe one day because that would be so cool. Okay, fine. I will give it a shot for you. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. I mean, Andy Bernard, really good character. What's his real name? What's his name? Andy Bernard. Oh, why am I forgetting? Oh, Ed Helms. Yeah, Ed Helms. Oh, you love him from yeah. the Hangover movies. Oh, he, yes, I do. He's love in him. it. Will Ferrell's in it at one point. The he's guy, so I don't know who plays Robert California, but he that character is fucking funny. Uh, All right. It's just so good. It's so good. And okay. then we can laugh together. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It could be awesome. Okay. We can laugh together. This could be us, but you're playing. Okay. If, Literally one day at my old job, my friend Alma, she's also obsessed with the office, and she's like, "Let me just show you like my the my favorite scene." And she showed me like the fire. Scene. Oh yeah, the stress relief. Really. Like everyone stay calm or whatever. And yeah. she's stay literally like dying calm. laughing. I'm sitting there like, but that's probably because I have no context. It's just like a yeah. random scene of something. It's not as funny because you don't know the characters exactly. and why it's so funny. Which I understand. Like, there's so mm-hmm. many shows where if you don't understand the character, like it's not it's not going to be funny. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to know the character. 100%. But I just recently finished... Um, oh, uh, Shit's Creek. You yeah, Shit's Creek. It. And now I'm re-watching it. Fuck, I love that show, goddamn. If you like Shit's Creek, then you've got to like The Office. That shit the kills office me. Is, I love Shit's Creek, but The Office is better, by far. <sighs> the Nothing in the world compares with... Compares. <laughs> compares. <laughs> Why don't you write uh, an essay on how much you love... I seriously <laughs> would. This, these people have been there for me. I was watching it through my whole pregnancy no, in the hospital it's while like your I was giving birth, comfort show. Afterwards... I know my daughter's going to grow up knowing that theme song. She's going to be dancing to it. Like, and it's okay, a big so part it's of our like lives. your ultimate comfort show. Yes. Which I understand because yeah. my ultimate comfort show is Will and Grace, which is right. a much older show. I feel like most people won't know what it is. But no, I get what you mean. Like, it mm-hmm. will always make you feel good. And no matter how many times yeah. you watch, I could literally ca- quote that entire show That's how I am with verbatim. Like, I know every single word. <laughs> well, there's actually this phenomenon oh. where you can kind of rewatch The Office and forget a bunch of things too. So oh. it's, it becomes a great comfort show because every time I watch it, I, I do find, find new things where I completely forget about episodes and mm. I think people refer to it like office amnesia or something. But Wow. So are you in for the challenge? Well, considering you told me you're not paying me out till three seasons in. You'll be there in like two weeks, I'm telling you. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I'm down to at least try the, I'll try the challenge. I'll challenge myself that next time we record, so a week from now, Okay. I'll have at least watched a few episodes. Deal. What if I don't like it though? I feel but like that's I have why I think to it like could it. be fun. You could come here and you could tell me your critiques if you don't like it, okay. and we can fight. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> we can fight. People and then see that. progressively over time, you're gonna like it more, and it's gonna be okay. Great. Fine. It's going to be amazing. You want to hear what else is gonna be amazing? What? 
Okay, so Kendall and I really like Taco Bell, for those of you who oh. don't know. Dude, we, I haven't had Taco Bell in like four months. I'm not even kidding. Um. Okay, well, you used to be a fan. I'm a big Taco Bell fan. I am fan. a fan, but I just haven't. So, if you guys know, you know. Back in the day, they had this menu item, the Enchirito. Oh, yeah, and it dude. was like an enchilada, but Taco Bell style. You showed that to me. Oh, my you God. You were still in high school. We went through the drive-thru, and I was like, bitch, <gasps> that shit is life-changing. Mm. So mm -hmm. good. So You good. like it too, Sam? Oh, my God. I love the Enchirito. But they don't have good it. news I've got good news for you. Well, for years they would make it anyway. Yeah, after they, they got like, rid of took it. it off the menu and they would still make it. Now they, I asked like a few months back and the, I don't even think the guy working had ever even heard of him. He was like, oh no. <laughs> so <laughs> anyways, there was a poll that was on Twitter that Taco Bell did back like from in September asking if people would rather have the double decker taco or the end Chirito back and guess which one one duh the end Chirito, okay by 62 percent of votes and you know what that means fiesta time oh hell yeah but they're coming back with the fucking end Chirito on november 17th but only until like the end of november so Why? it'll be for two weeks or which means and watch it be for two days because they're going to be sold out of everything true. <laughs> they said for i think till the end of uh november which means i'm going to be getting that every single day <laughs> It's so I'm gonna good. buy them and freeze them so I can have a stock of it's them. It's so good, That's especially good if you don't want to get meat. Like I know a lot of people, even if you're not a vegetarian, yeah. you don't want to get meat from fast food restaurants because it's just like the no, fuck? just get cheese and onion. Yeah, oh, or and yeah, beans mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. The sauce on it is really just what slaps so hard. It was so good. So, anyways, okay, okay. have you gotten the just regular bean and cheese burrito? Of course, oh, yeah. That's kind of similar to it because that does have that sauce yeah. in there. But so it's like, so why can can't just... you make it? I right. know you can make it. You have right. everything in there right. you need. Everything from Taco Bell is literally the same Ted ingredients just put together in different <laughs> shapes. It's true. Like, it's, it's literally true. Exactly. How are you guys out of ingredients? Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, I got mad at them. The reason I haven't gone back is because I got pissed after the I Mexican know. pizza. When I was pregnant, that was slapping so hard over the oh. summer. I was so happy. So they good. We're like sold out of it after a few days. Yeah, they took it off. It's back now. It's back for good. So that's when I stopped going. I haven't been to Taco Bell since then. You should try it again pissed. because they say it's like back and back for good. Wow. Maybe also, I'll try. they need to put the nacho fries on there permanently. Mm, nacho fries. I could literally have a whole podcast about Taco Bell. I love that shit so much. Anyways, that was my good news. Okay, so we have The Office and Taco Bell. Remember you wanted to have a show called Dinner Bell with Janelle? No, it could just be Taco Bell, Bell with Janelle. Janelle. And instead of me cooking, it's just me eating fast food. <laughs> yes, that could be so good. Hell yeah. That could be so good. Taco Bell is delicious, mm -hmm. okay? And everyone's like, it's not real Mexican food. I know that. Duh. I'm not going to Taco Bell to get Mexican food, folks. It's like its own genre. It's Taco Bell. <laughs> it really it's is. It's literally just Taco Bell. It really is. If someone said, I'm really craving Mexican food, and then they're like, okay, let's go to Taco Bell. Yeah. Like, I would be like, what? No. Not <laughs> the yeah. only thing Taco Bell could do better is serve margaritas. They do in Vegas. Oh, yeah, in Vegas at yeah, the I'm cantina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shit's fire. Yeah, the Vegas You can get married lit. at the Taco Bell in Vegas. <laughs> the cantina. Now, that's a flex. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Anyways. Shall we get into... Let's get into... Let's talk about Kanye first, because... Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> It's like pretty much the summary with Kanye every oh, single God. time. We this have guy's about Adam was fucking. What? Okay, first off, he rolls out on a uh, Paris Fashion Week, I believe it was, and then also afterwards on North's basketball game wearing a White Lives Matter T-shirt, sir. Yeah, I mean, and see, okay, so when this first was going on last week, we talked about it and we were like, should we even talk about him? Because it's getting to the point where clearly he is doing these things for attention and giving him that attention kind of feels like it's feeling the fire he's winning. Yeah, because you know, that's what he wants. Right. But then this just got so much worse today. Yeah. That we were like, okay, let's kind of go over some of this because now it's becoming really, in my opinion, dangerous. I agree. And scary yeah well Which it's, it has been for a while i mean it's just god yeah when you think he can't while. get any worse he just does he just does yeah so he's talking about his white lives matter shirt now he also went on to um what's that guy's name tucker carlson <laughs> we have a clip from that right yes we do okay. to talk about why he decided to have this as his choice of outfit oh god alpha tree you made reference to the White Lives Matter t-shirt mm -hmm. which you brought out at 
Paris Fashion Week. Yeah. What, what, why did you do that and what did it mean? You know, I did. I do certain things from a feeling. I like I just I just channeled the energy. It just feels right. It's using a gut instinct, a connection with God. What? And just brilliance. You oh. know, like as if you ask like Tanya Harding how she did the, the triple flip or the triple spin. Yeah. She was in so much Wait, practice that when what? it was time for her to mm-hmm. skate in no, a, in a, com- in a competitive format, it just happened. Like it happened outside of practice. It happened in the real format. And <laughs> that's what, hap- that's what's happening is God is like preparing us for the real, for the real battles. And we are, we are in a battle with the media. Like the majority of the media has a, a godless agenda. And you're going to go on top of the and and stuff. Okay. The jokes are not working. This whole like, oh, yeah, he's crazy and all these things. They don't work because the media has, you know, they've also watched travesties happen, just even specifically to me, and just watch it and act like it wasn't happening. And they stay quiet about it. Um uh, what if they, so, what if, what, they what, I want to answer the, the white, yeah. I, I feel like someone caught what I was saying, the comparison of Tanya Harden about the, the white lives matter. You know, my dad is a educated, um, ex black Panther and he put a text to me today. He said, white lives matter. Ha 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 ha. And I said, I thought the shirt was a funny shirt. I thought the idea of me wearing it was funny. And I said, Dad, what do you think it was funny? He said, just, just a black man stating the obvious. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. you know, my dad doesn't listen to rap music and he's like super educated. We, we opened up a water distribution center in the Dominican Republic together. He's like the original Steve Jobs, but he was getting blocked every which way with all of his ideas and he didn't have uh, an endless bank account and he didn't have an Instagram. So all these ideas, he had to like take them back and compress them. Like my dad is the most brilliant person that I know. And we actually have a strained relationship because I was taken from him because my mom okay. was an yeah. actress. Yeah. Is an so yeah, she was a that, liberal. Um, that's the thing with Kanye is when you, he's asked a question, he skates around the answer in so many different ways that you get totally lost and confused. And then you, for, almost forget what was even asked. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, because, wait, let me make sure I'm catching up with this. He said that he did that because, because Tanya Harding can do Well, it. I think he's basically making the comparison that it he wasn't really rehearsing it. It God, just happened. God just basically t- told him to do it. Well, there would have been so many good, so many other good examples to use other yeah, than man, Tanya Harding doing know. the triple whatever yeah and then his dad i'm so confused like that just was... yeah well that's the thing is clearly his mind is very all over the place and that's why we find it so difficult to even talk about kanye because we know he's been very public about his mental health issues mm-hmm. other people in his life has been public about it mm-hmm. but it's like where do we draw the line where is it when it's hurting other people or becoming dangerous then is there an excuse for it? I don't think so. No, absolutely not. I know people are very torn on that and clearly and it's not fair. He's all over the place. If okay, so people who are mentally ill or have bipolar disorder, that's not fair to them either to blame it on his bipolar. Right. Okay, well there's people who have bipolar disorder and are not saying horrific things like this and mm-hmm. dangerous things. There's, there's more and we'll get into that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not an excuse. Clearly, yes, he's mentally ill, but mm-hmm. also that doesn't mean that you can just, no. oh, well, shrug a shoulder and, you know, look the other way. Yeah, and it's clearly not the only thing that's going on here. He no. also has, like, addiction to hype. He yeah. wants to draw attention to himself at any cost possible, and he knows that by doing something like this and then saying that it's somehow what God wants. Right. I mean, that's just so hurtful in its own way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He also went on Instagram and said, everyone knows that Black Lives Matter was a scam. Now it's over. You're welcome. They just, ugh. and then, okay, this is the most recent thing. Yeah. So 
He was recently um, restricted from Instagram and deleted content from his page after he violated the rules and guidelines. Although people from Meta have said they're not 100% sure. Like it hasn't been confirmed exactly what it was specifically he said that got him taken off of Instagram. Mm -hmm. But then he went on Twitter, which he hadn't been on Twitter, I think, since 2020, 2021, I want to say. So it was a while. He went on Twitter and tweeted, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going to Death Con 3 on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone whoever opposes your agenda. And so he got taken off Twitter for that. Yeah, which... That is good. horrifically... Yeah. That's dangerous. I mean, not mm-hmm. to say that the stuff he was doing before, you know, wasn't either, but just to say something like that is mm-hmm. so inexcusable, yeah. in my opinion. Especially right after Yom Kippur, Kippur was last week. Oh, yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but... Yeah, but... It was a, one of the most peaceful days in <clears throat> Judaism, mm-hmm. and it's just so out of left field and anti-Semitic. It's just like... There is no excuse for that at all. Right. And I think at, when you start doing things like this, your right to free speech, well, you have the right to go out and stand in the park, right? And say whatever. If right. he wants to go say whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. But when you're on this public platform. But and Twitter is a oh, privately owned right. company. So like if it goes against their terms and conditions, they have the right to kick you yeah. off. And I think that at that point when it's becoming hate speech and possibly dangerous, and firing up people more than they are, firing up people to be more and more hateful, you got to go. And mm-hmm. when you take that platform away from people, it's really not as much of a problem anymore. Yeah. But he's always going to be able to walk around in shirts and put whatever he wants on it. And people are going to take pictures and he knows he'll always be able to get attention. Right. I mean, I do think like if you want to say horrific things like, OK, Yeah, I guess in theory, you have the right to, like you said, go out on the street and say disgusting things. But I don't think that you should be having a platform. Like if the KKK, obviously they say horrific things, but if they're going to go on Twitter and start speaking, they're they're going to get taken off and for good reason. Exactly. And I'm sure he's pissed that he's taken off. But I mean, it's like he's pushing the boundaries. He's got to know, you know, that it's going to happen at some point. So, yeah, yeah, it's just very sad. I mean... When you really get to that level, you're so desperate for attention. I mean, he was part of the family who is all about hype and oh, staying yeah. in the media no matter good, bad, whatever. Yep. So he's, you know, he knows the recipe and mm-hmm. he's not getting as much attention lately. And it feels like every time he's not getting enough attention, he does something shocking, whether it's something like this or he puts out a video of Pete Davidson dying. Right. You know, his head. Right, right. So it, this is clearly his pattern. And the response that that's why I said it's hard to even discuss because we don't want to give him what he wants. No one wants to give him that. No. But it's like you can't just stay silent, yeah. and ignore things like this. It felt weird doing that, especially with like all this recent. I mean, it was like a handful of shit that had come out in within a few days. Yeah. Um, And, you know, at, like this show is about reporting on this type of stuff. And right. I feel like you know, it would be a disservice to not stand up and be like, we obviously think this is bullshit. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we agree with the fact that he was taken off these platforms because he really, you know, should have no ability to spew that kind of Mm -hmm. hatred Mm -hmm. um, out into the world. No one should. The same rules apply. Yeah. So, anyways, that's our thought on that. Who knows, dude? I I mean, yeah. It's just the the same issues with Kanye resurfacing. The same, there's only so much you can say I feel I mean, really bad for his kids. Oh, yeah. I do, too. Like, I don't know. I do too. Even know if they're, like, old enough to really understand what's going on or maybe they're super sheltered from the internet. But, like, mm-hmm. man, that That's, sucks. Especially the fact that he's wearing that shirt to her basketball game, Norris basketball game. That's right. just, like, really, dude, at your own child's right. event that the attention should be on them. There really shouldn't be news coming out of it. You have to yeah. do something like that. I mean, how embarrassing. That's such and- a great point. I guess it's one thing. And again, I'm not saying that what he wore was great at all. But I guess it's one thing to wear something that's, you know, shocking like that to some type of event like a fashion show. But it's mm-hmm. another thing to do that at your own kid's basketball game. Like it's a mm-hmm. it's a kid's basketball game. Let it be nothing more than that. You right. know what I mean? Right. If you're going to make a statement. And I, I mean, it was interesting kind of what he was saying that his father thought it was funny because it's it's I don't know I don't know what he was trying to say that it's a clear joke 
it's clear. Well, it's like obvious he's that white that, lives matter or something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't. I don't really. I don't, know. I don't know. I mean, the bottom line is, it's clearly all for attention. Yeah, and and he's getting yeah. it. Yep. Uh, yeah, not great. When she moved back into her hometown, Gia never expected to run into Jack. But when she sees him at a local dive bar, she finds herself drawn to him all over again. Want to know what happens next? Or maybe you want to know a whole lot more? Well, check out this story and many more on Dipsy. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of sexy, short audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Find stories about an intriguing coworker with a British accent or hooking up with your hot yoga instructor. One thing that I absolutely love about Dipsy is how inclusive they are. They have a story for everyone, whether you're straight or maybe you're a queer listener, they've got something for you. And new content is released every single week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. And they even have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy stories you can read. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. I love Dipsy. It's so easy to use. It's really empowering and it is a great way for self-exploration. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days full of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. Okay, you guys, we all know that it is officially pumpkin season. Halloween is almost here. And that means the holiday season is right around the corner. It is sneaking up on us, folks. And if you're a small business owner, you know how important it is to be ready for the insane holiday season. And if you haven't started prepping for the chaos of holiday mailing and shipping, you are already falling behind. But luckily with stamps.com, you can get everything you need to make your life a whole lot easier. It's the 24 seven post office that you can access from anywhere. No lines, no traffic, no hassle. Stamps.com is your one-stop shop for all of your shipping and mailing needs. And for more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. You can get access to the USPS and UPS services that you need to run your small business right from your computer. It's so easy. And with inflation on the rise, every dollar counts. So protect your margins with major discounts on USPS and UPS rates. Stamps.com is really a stress-free solution for every small business. You can use Stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer. It's so easy. And if you need a package pickup, well, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. So get ahead of the holiday chaos this year. You can get started with stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code SESH for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. Plus, there's no long-term commitments or contracts. All you got to do is go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code SESH. Okay, well, moving on here. So this weekend, a skit came out on SNL. Right, right, yo. So obviously... We talked about this last week a little bit. The Try Guys, who are now Try, three, three Mm -hmm. guys, Try Mm -hmm. Guys. SNL, it literally got so big. I'm shocked that SNL picked this up and Mm -hmm. did a skit on it because it's just like... Well, it shows they got really nothing to do these days. Yeah, apparently. (laughs) No good material. But the fact that this is a YouTube channel for the most Mm -hmm. part that is now reaching this type of news is Mm -hmm. crazy to Mm -hmm. me. So anyways, SNL hops on on Saturday. And they do a skit basically acting as though someone's like reporting on CNN and then all of a sudden they get like breaking news that the Try Guys are here to talk about their, you know, latest experience or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the way they executed this was so cringy, man. Yeah, it was really just not funny at all. No, it wasn't. They were definitely trying to go for the vibe of why does everyone care about this culture is evolving poorly that there's so much attention Mm -hmm. on this YouTube channel and this cheating scandal. Meanwhile, all these other important things are happening in the world and people only care about that, which to some degree, there's a discussion to be had about that. Yeah. I do agree to some extent, but this was just not the topic for that conversation to be had because this is very serious. Well, they basically made it they almost, in my opinion, took the side of Ned and were like, instead of like directing him, they were like hating on the other three for being so upset by it. 
And then yeah. also being like, yeah, why does cheating like matter? That. Like Beyonce or uh, Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce. And right, they like, did why is that, that so heinous? Instead of being like, you know, if you're going to make a skit, maybe make it a skit uh, like about the fact that Ned yeah. cheated on his wife. Clown and, and Ned, yeah. Right, exactly. But instead they were literally making fun of the other three for feeling such a type of way. And like, you can say what you want, but like they're, they're allowed to feel whatever they want. They can make a video about mm-hmm. saying how upset they are. Like, that's fine. Which is just the classic like, ha ha, YouTubers are a joke. Right. Which is oh. annoying. Oh, LOL. I mean, it's <laughs> 2022. YouTube creators, you know, is a giant uh, industry. And these yeah. people have a huge fucking company and oh, yeah. a massive amount of followers and views. And they probably get more than a lot of the news stations do anyway. So it's like, you guys are just so out of the times now that you look silly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is, the, this is where the world has evolved to. And... You know, it's it's very much trying to, I think, make content for an older audience that is removed from this and thinks it's all ridiculous and mm-hmm. doesn't understand it. And it's very clear that they don't understand it. No. So yeah. it sounds like, though, there was some behind the scenes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if this is real, but I've been reading that, again, I don't really know how you could ever verify this unless this person came out and verified it themselves. But people are saying that Ned has friends that work on SNL and are like basically wrote that script to make him look less yeah. bad and make the instead of him his actions look bad making people's reactions look right. bad. Right. Which I don't know. I mean again, I don't know if that's actually true but yeah, someone straight up was like shout out to Ned's college friends for writing this skit that downplays him cheating on his wife with his subordinate uh and makes the other guys look ridiculous for actually correctly handling a clear company and HR violation. Mhm. Um, I love that SNL is essentially mocking a group of men for taking sexual misconduct at work seriously and actually firing someone for it. It started off funny, but it really went downhill because apparent what because it became apparent what a toxic take they could have had on the whole thing. SNL really missed the mark on this one. I should be embarrassed to have posted it on YouTube. So yeah, then they posted. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, real quick. You made a great point. You're like. I think a lot of times the traditional media makes fun mm-hmm. of new media and YouTube and stuff, but then they all have their own fucking YouTube channels. Right. Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> and all, like, you know, SNL's Gotta uploading reach this the shit. people somehow, this right? This video I checked as of this morning was t- number three trending. So yeah, y'all are getting, getting some attention from people raped. who don't typically watch, mm-hmm. uh, you know, SNL. Well, now all these people who don't watch your show are watching this clip. So you, I mean, I don't yeah. know why you're making fun of, you know, YouTube and stuff when you're taking advantage of it and, mm-hmm. you know, well, it's just not funny. It just, I see what they were trying to do. It just totally missed the mark. Yeah. And it, yeah, it really downplaying such a serious situation. I mean, this, it's not funny. This workplace, major workplace violation. Yeah. And, I mean, abuse of power. And, totally. Um. Did, so I guess we didn't really get to talk last week mm-hmm. when we brought up the Try Guys mm-hmm. about their responses because that came out after yeah. we had recorded our episode. They're pissed. Yeah. And I would be too. Yeah, their video they came out with was like... Dude, they were like almost crying. They were, some of them, yeah. And I don't blame them. I mean, they built this whole career, the four of them. I I mean, Mm -hmm. it seems like they were really close friends. And I think that they prided themselves on being entertaining while also still being relatively like clean, I guess you could Mm -hmm. say, and like not problematic, but Mm -hmm. still funny in their own way and, you know, still entertaining. And so, I mean, it totally got ripped to shreds and i think it i think they responded the right way like i do too you know well yeah yeah, i think they handled it really well clearly they had to go about it in a certain way and it was very um pr involved and calculated it had to be that way yeah uh it's a very serious issue and they have like i said a huge business and they had to probably pay a lot of money to kick ned out of it probably um i'm sure the last couple of weeks have just been absolute hell for them they mm-hmm. said it they this started a while back for them yeah. too yeah. Mm-hmm. i was listening to their tripod which i think is the funniest fucking name i know it's so good love that um i had never heard it before like i said i've never really i've known of these guys but i didn't i've never really followed them or known anything about their situation yeah but it was interesting the way they talked about on their episode which they had to really be careful with their words. Oh, I mean, yeah. it wasn't filled with juicy details no. by any means. It was very much about how it was handling this behind the scenes, how it made all of them like physically sick. Yeah. Headaches, the shits. <laughs> They've just they were like, this has been horrible. And they're losing a friend. Their mm-hmm. business is like imploding. It's in- affecting so many people. And then to have this public spotlight 
and so much pressure on them of did they know and right it's right. like totally stressful no oh, yeah and i really can't imagine dealing with like something like that here you know oh. i mean we have our own media company over here and or like god the, how exhausting if someone or like the wife you have to too. kick someone out and then yeah the, yeah the wives like, yeah you're all close like friends so yeah just knowing that that happened like i just mm-hmm. that would feel like it would ruin and they make their own content like the try wives yeah. and so how is that going to be affected and and how sad for them that this person that they have worked with for years now is it sounds like they don't even have a friendship with him yeah. like they seem very angry yeah. and to you know now have to move forward without him it's it's not a good situation and it was in very bad taste for mm-hmm. snl to try to make this funny if they wanted to have a skit that included this they should have had a completely different angle yeah I agree. this was just off and i think it's weird because people are like hating on how like upset they are over this and like well you'd also be hating if they like didn't give a shit and ed was still around or whatever if they just like you know pushed it under the rug and were like oh well yeah let's move on here right like i feel like no matter what people would have something Mm -hmm. to say about how they handled it yeah so well snl has been really bad i haven't watched it in like another like the last season or so yeah me either i've seen things here and there i was such a huge fan of it when i was growing up especially when andy sandberg was on yeah so good yeah kristen Wiig and jason sudeikis those were the good days it hasn't been good in a long time it's like they're just grasping at straws if they're they're like what can we talk about that people are interested in and they have to pull this i mean that just shows you i mean granted the truck this is i'm shocked made so much because i was on a twitter and i saw cnn was like talking about it i don't even know if they reported it like on their tv channel but i'm still like damn these major news networks are reporting on this yeah it's interesting well they're a big company right Mm -hmm. in media yeah i know Mm -hmm. yeah um becky who is keith's wife actually went on instagram and posted this tiktok or sorry on instagram on tiktok and posted this video um we have it here Let's go ahead and watch it. So I don't have much to say at this time, but for now, I'll just say. So this is Keith, Keith's wife. And then um, Eugene did like a. Uh. So that's what she came out. But then she did come out. Apparently, she got some sort of apology. I don't Which know. one's Keith? Sorry, I don't. I'm so confused. Keith, he's tall. <laughs> I don't know how to describe him. Yeah, he's like one of okay, the... Okay, the tall one. The tall one? Yeah. <laughs> I think I know. Okay. Um. So then she actually came back later and posted a follow-up video saying that hmm. she had received some type of apology. So I don't know if really what that means, but... So I deleted that last TikTok because I got a very sincere and genuine apology. Um, If there's anything that can be learned from this shithole of an experience I feel like we're all collectively having right now is that the things you put on the internet are there. They are there forever. And people see them. Real people see them. So the next time you're going to like tweet something that you think is funny or post, I don't, I don't even know. Just real people can see these things. So let's just relax for a little bit. Um, Sorry, yeah, I'm confused. What is she referring to? That's what I'm wondering too. She, I, she says she got some type of apology. It's very cryptic. Like, I don't think people really know, but it sounds like mm. maybe she talked to Ned or something and, Hmm. Maybe people are like being crazy online. And so she's saying like, you know, even you don't know what he's going through behind. I I really don't know. I just thought it was interesting that she came out and said that afterwards. So, yeah, that is strange. I know. I can't don't really know what to make of that. Yeah. Neither do I. Hmm. So. Anyways. Yeah. SNL really took the L. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. SNL. I was, um watching their podcast or like the explanation video on YouTube. Yeah. And it was crazy. I mean, obviously I know that they make so much content, but they were talking about how they have to, they're literally like have content already Mm pre-made with Ned in it. And now they have to like go back or no, they're not even going to use it. Oh, really? Yeah. A lot of it they couldn't edit him out. They said some. 
Ugh, they oh, look really mess. mad about that. Oh, they've <gasps> lost so much money over this. Oh yeah, and yeah, since he's an owner, they've most likely got to pay him out. Oh yeah. Josh was explaining that to me the other day, and I was just like, oh my god. Yeah. I think there'd be something in place like, but if you fuck up, you don't <laughs> get shit. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, nope. I I don't know exactly how that works. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I would assume. Yeah. What a nightmare. And they've yeah they had they knew about this and couldn't say anything to even their own employees for a long time. Oh, wow. And they had to just act like everything is normal and like secretly plan how they were going to figure this out that because sucks. fans brought it to their attention that Ned was out, you know, the mm. whole story. Right. E Terrible. It's, you guys yep. know if he's still, I couldn't find any information on if he's like with that person. Oh, with the one he cheated. Yeah. yeah. No well, yeah. he, there's video of him, uh, like paparazzi video of him and his wife mm. together. Oh. And they said they were working things out. I don't know, man. You guys know that Kendall and I are both huge fans of Audible. We think their service is so good, especially because neither of us are very good at reading, to be honest. But that is why Audible is so great, because you can listen to stories. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. Listen to exciting new titles like Monsters and How to Tame Them from Kevin Hart. Even if being a quote-unquote better you isn't something you regularly think about, well, Kevin Hart's signature real talk and wit will teach you how to tame your negative thoughts and patterns. And as an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers. All Audible members get access to a growing selection of audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts that are included with every membership. Of course, you can listen to all you want and more in every single month, more titles are added. I love Audible because you can listen to it anywhere, whether you're on a plane, in a car, on a train, maybe you're just doing the dishes, or maybe you need some peace and quiet away from your kids in a different room. Well, pull up an audiobook, and I promise you it is the best way to escape the busy and hustle bustle of your everyday life. So check out Kevin Hart's Monsters and How to Tame Them today on Audible. New members can try it for free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash sesh or text sesh to 500-500. That's audible.com slash sesh or text sesh to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Audible.com slash sesh. Okay, in other news, other spicy news. Spicy news. Jake Paul might be fighting... Mike Tyson. Woo! Uh, <laughs> it, just, it just gets so much. That's ridiculous. Uh, that is something I would never have thought I would ever no, be saying. But here we are. Yep. I don't here know. We it are. seems as though the chances are slim, but the, both of them have mentioned it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. fucking knows, dude. Yeah. Yep. Mike Tyson went on Jimmy Kimmel like back in June mm -hmm. and was asked about potentially fighting him. And he was like, that could be very interesting. I never really took it seriously, but yeah, it could be interesting. Everything is possible, but it got to <laughs> happen this year. It's got to happen this year. Well, that would be really fun. Uh, and then <laughs> I, I guess he was like, that. he did give him credit. He's like, yeah, he's skilled enough. You know, I'm gonna have to give mm -hmm. it to him. He's skilled enough because he's winning. Even if the fight fighting, even if he's fighting guys that you don't believe is a good enough fighter, um, they should still be able to beat him, but they can't. Yeah. He's beating people that he shouldn't really be beating. So. It's true. I mean, yeah, he says we got to give him the credit. And that's true to some degree. It's just like so insane. I know. I can't believe Mr. Disney Channel Flow is now here. <laughs> oh, shit. The summer day, bro, with the Disney Channel Flow. <laughs> I Dude. know. Literally, they are like huge names now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike Tyson's, mm -hmm. he's 56. And mm -hmm. his career record is 50 to 6 with 44 wins by way of <sighs> knockout. Dude, Damn. I would pay a decent amount of money to watch this fight. Oh, same. I would too. That'd be crazy. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And then Jake Paul went on um, this guy named Andrew Schultz. He has a podcast, Flagrant. And he says that he believes Mike. Flagrant? Flagrant. flagrant. I thought it was like fla flagrant. Yeah. Flagrant. Like, like fragrant. fragrant. <laughs> flagrant. Like, <laughs> flagrant. <laughs> flagrant. Flagrant. Like, yeah. fla like flavor. Yeah. Like fragrant. Fragrant for flag. flavor. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, I guess I can't talk shit. We almost named this show the bullshit fest. So <laughs> whatever. Right. Here we are. <laughs> um, but anyways, he said that he believes Mike Tyson doesn't want to fight him out of fear that he will knock him out. Okay, we have a clip of this because this is funny. We need to watch it here. Okay. Mike Tyson goes, yeah, maybe we could do a fight. Mm -hmm. You think you fuck up Mike Tyson? Who is now much older, right? Heavily I don't know under if I would the influence. Use those words, but I, I, I would win. You and, would win. And I think... <laughs> 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 Come on, Al. Ow! <laughs> you are a 
hater, bro. <laughs> Son, are you serious, bro? <laughs> Serious as a heart attack. I respect you and your brother. You guys have delusional confidence. Like, it's yes. amazing. So, Al, <laughs> delusional optimism. Yes, optimism. Yes. Yes. All right, I'll take that. No. It's, uh, it's a real po- superpower. It is. It is. Yeah. Yes. No, it, it really it is. is. It is. Um, dude. Dude, this is Mike Tyson, bro. Dude, that's, he, you know, I, I will start out by saying I love Mike Tyson. I love him, his family. He's such a great guy, such a wise guy. He's taking me under his wing. And That's owe him, owe him a, a ton of credit for helping me start my career with the Nate Robinson fight on his, on his undercard. Oh, that's right. Um, uh, we forget. That's crazy. Yeah. We forget. Wow. That, that, was that, the, that was that same night. Bro. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was that. No, that was the main card. But. Oh, wow. And you were doing some cool shit afterwards where you were going, I sold a million pay-per-views. <laughs> like Mike wasn't on the fucking card. <laughs> yeah, he helped a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you but go take on. it where you can get it. Get it, boy. All right, so go on. So Tyson is, you know, he's he's cool. He's the OG. Yeah. He's the unk. But at the same time, you think if you guys were in the ring together, I think he thinks that he would knock me out, and I think that is maybe the reason why he doesn't want to do the fight because I think he wants to avoid maybe knocking me out, like hurting you or doing something yeah. like that. He doesn't realize how good you exactly. are. <laughs> Dude, I think that guy's spot on the delusional confidence. Yeah. But then, I don't know. It's so hard with them. There have been times that everyone's like, no, Mm -hmm. you're not going to be able. And he's been good. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I would like to see it. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, he was, uh, there's, Jake was at this press conference leading up to his like previous fight with Anderson Silva. And he asked if there was any other fighter. He was asked if there was any other fighter that he would like to face. And he was like, Mike Tyson, come on, man. Like, he basically called him out straight and was like, let's mm-hmm. let's fight. So, but I don't know. I just think it's so beneath Mike Tyson. Like, you have such a successful he career that- He can make a that, fucking shitload of money. I know. Eh, what like, does he care more about? He's got a lot of money as it just is. Just like Floyd. Like, yeah. why? He's yeah. undefeated. Why? Because he can make a lot of money. And, right. you know, a lot of people are talking about you. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, I would fucking love to see it. Didn't your dad say he wanted to go see yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I actually found out about this from my dad because he texted me. He's like, if that goes down, we need to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Fly Hell out to yeah, wherever it's happening. That. Oh, my God. Actually, I think his fight with Anderson Silva is, is coming up. Oh, oh it's coming God. up? Yeah. Oh, I thought it had already happened. Oh, it was his previous press conference for it then. Mm. I don't know. I can't keep up with exactly who he's yeah. fighting and when. We'll um, see how he does. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I'm real excited about that. Okay. Speaking of Pauls, <sighs> yeah, there's another Paul in the news because Logan Paul, mm-hmm. Logie Bear, has tried <laughs> to <laughs> pick a fight with Bad Bunny. Kind of, yeah. Called him out. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty ridiculous. Okay. So let's go over it. <sighs> now, keep in mind, we are not tax experts here so Mm -hmm. i will try to explain to you in the best way that i understand what is going on Mm -hmm. basically what's happening is bad bunny who is from puerto rico he made a documentary slash music video recently Mm -hmm. and one of the things that he did was bring up the fact about how logan paul is taking advantage of act 22 which is basically a tax break for people who are not from Puerto Rico. And it allows residents to avoid paying capital gains tax on cryptocurrency stocks and real estate. Um, so one of the reasons that, because both the Pauls live there now and they've, I think they moved there a year ago. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Maybe a little longer even. Yeah. Well, in the, his 20 minute documentary, did he actually mention Logan? Um, I don't know if he mentions him because unfortunately it's in Spanish and I don't speak it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I couldn't find a clip of from there of the, uh, closed captions, but his picture is on there. Like I'm pretty, and I remember Carly telling us like, even if he didn't actually say his name, he's probably like alluding to people like him. He put him in there. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and also I think just in general, like Puerto Ricans are just frustrated in general with people who are moving here because basically the whole idea, I think, of why they created um, Act 22 is because they were hoping that people who are rich can go to Puerto Rico, spend money, and, like, help the economy mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. It's like, kind of the idea behind it. Yeah. But 
with that, they've said that, okay, a lot of people have gone there, spent a lot of money, and especially on real estate. Mm -hmm. And now the real estate's super expensive. So now locals cannot afford. And a lot of beaches are being kind of taken over by people Mm -hmm. with tons of money who are building shit and building vacation homes. Mm And, um, you know, I, I think that the law is that all beaches in Puerto Rico are public, but now it's becoming a lot more difficult because of these rich people are just kind of coming in and taking over in a sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing that he alluded to was basically like people like Jake Paul or Logan Paul and Jake Paul, I guess are taking advantage of this tax break and it's doing damage to our, our land. So this is where it gets so dumb. So the Pauls live in a mansion that's reportedly worth $13 million. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. oh my God, yeah. that is crazy. I didn't realize that Jake had moved there as well. I remember when Logan did. And remember when he was like riding a golf cart on the beach oh, or an yeah. ATV or something and yeah. going like he was riding over it, turtles. Yeah, he was riding it over turtle nests. Yeah, I put that in here that I was like, they haven't had the best track record mm-hmm. since moving there because yeah, he was uh, riding on a golf cart on the sand and where there was a ton of turtle nests so he like mm-hmm. could have damaged them or something so anyways yeah they're they're not their their names aren't very well respected there i guess you could yeah. say as far as mm-hmm. i'm aware but yeah anyways they moved there because they're talking about how it's getting crazy in california with the taxes and stuff um but you know i, I guess the whole idea is it's 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 even more just them. It's just because it's a ton of people. Like there's tons of people who qualify for this and are moving there and are taking mm-hmm. advantage of this and kind of ruining what was so sacred about Puerto Rico to begin with. Right. So anyways, he he gets called out and then he goes on the Philip DeFranco show. And he basically makes the point of that look, yes, I moved here, but I'm here and I'm trying to help people too. Like I'm trying to help um, raise money here. And he he says that he recently donated 25,000 to uh, Tai Salud, which is a community-based, their website says a community-based feminist organization dedicated to improving women's access to healthcare, mm. to reducing violence within the community and to encourage economic growth. So he's like, I'm donating here. When uh, Hurricane Fiona hit back in September, he was going he was seen going like door to door and delivering supplies and you know trying to like help people without power and stuff but and wasn't he calling it hurricane maria yeah, he kept okay in his, in philly's interview unless i'm confused but because he kept calling it hurricane maria and hurricane maria back, happened back in 2017 so that was long before he moved there he's talking about hurricane fiona which happened last month mm-hmm. so he, he's literally calling it the wrong <laughs> Man, yeah. Or maybe he is referring to Me? devastation that is still ongoing from Maria. But why would you rent? But we, there, there's been other hurricanes that have damaged it since. Like, why yeah. wouldn't you just be talking about hurricane relief in general from yeah. the damage that they've all done? Mm. Um, he also says that him and Paul or uh, Jake Paul were donating, I think, like a hundred thousand dollars together. Um, refurbishing boxing gyms there and stuff so he's trying to make this point like look i'm doing really I'm good helping them i'm helping them mm-hmm. and he keeps saying, like i've only been here a year and a half so it's not like i you know i've had that much time to be able to you know do this or whatever so then he makes the brilliant move yeah to go ahead and start talking about how it's hypocritical for bad bunny to call him out because bad bunny also takes advantage of the same tax law which is just completely untrue yeah and incorrect yeah actually let's watch this small clip here of him saying it which i'm I'm not sure if that 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 was um on your list of things to ask about because i, I saw that video too well and that also talks and, about like the government uh, and, and and also grander issues as well it, it wasn't you know just one thing yeah i know i know it's just uh it's tough man because i i, lo- I love bad bunny you know and 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 i think he is an amazing entertainer i think he's a generational talent um but I do find it hypocritical because he – he, Bad Bunny is a Puerto Rican living in Puerto Rico who is privately taking advantage of the same tax program that he is publicly condemning. And, and, is that and, true? And I, I know this. His, his, his act is called uh, two, two Cientos Caritos, and so does his manager. 
uh, and I see things like this and it hurts. And he makes, he basically accuses him of doing yeah. this as well, mm-hmm. which is not true because mm-hmm. act 22 doesn't apply to people who are native to Puerto yeah. Rico and bad bunny is. So he literally Stupid. cannot qualify oh for it. Oh my God. So it's like, dude, you sound he like thought he was really doing something there. Oh, too. he really did. Mm-hmm. So then I think what he actually meant to say is that he qualifies for something called act 20, which is just for businesses exporting goods and services. And you do not have to be, or you can be a native in order to qualify for this. Like mm-hmm. anyone can, as far as my understanding so but he still pays taxes yeah he is a person yeah and he does not qualify for act 22 and jake paul and logan paul do and that's why a lot of people move there because if you're not from there or if you haven't been there a long time then you can you know have a huge tax break so surprise surprise his point made absolutely no sense yeah so basically that's that (laughs) is he Try to be like, he's a hypocrite and I'm sad because I'm a fan of him, but he actually <laughs> also sad. qualifies for it too when he doesn't because Act 22 specifically states you have to be um, someone who is not a native and Bad Bunny's a native. Man. Excellent. Ah, good work there. Dude, Logie. he's so confused. I don't know. He doesn't... Um, I don't even know what to say. It's so stupid. It's he doesn't just like, know how, what yeah. is your point, dude? You just well, he went on full D. Quiet. He had like a you know big platform to try and say some good shit, but he kind mm-hmm. of was acting Major a good. Yeah, yeah, what you were talking about doesn't even exist. And he kept nice calling Philly D partial, being like, "That's why I like you because you're so partial. Like you don't take sides." And he said it like three times, and then eventually Philly D's like, "I'm sorry, man. I got to interrupt you to try and like <laughs> make sure that people don't think that I'm partial. I'm impartial." <laughs> And he was like, oh, yeah, man, sorry. He was like, my my bad, man. Like, that I'm trying to be good with words or something like that. He's yeah. like, yeah, you're impartial. <laughs> trying to be good with words. He says things incorrectly all the time, too. He'll try to use really big words, and he just uses them in completely wrong context. Hell, yeah. All the time. Hell, yeah, brother. <sighs> Dude, I just cannot believe the two of them have been able to maintain their level of fame and, you know public attention throughout all these years i really thought after the suicide forest thing yeah that logan was going to be kind of done at that point but clearly no. i was wrong oh uh, yeah that got him even more attention oh yeah i feel like it really like blasted him blasted off. his yeah. career yeah and his brothers yeah i mean they're like huge names they just will now. not go away no they're not going to go away no especially now which I'm like, okay, if you want to, you know, donate tens of thousands of dollars and, and try and help people in Puerto Rico, then I'm all for that, obviously. Well, it's like, you guys, I mean, how much did he spend on his fucking Pokemon card? He spent like some insane amount of money on this rare Pokemon card that he wore around his neck. Will you look oh, that up? Oh, yeah. I he mean, came out with this. He's got with huge that around his money, neck, right? Yeah. And it was worth. Holy moly. Five point two million dollars. A fucking Pokemon Wait, card. So what great job with your hundred thousand donations to local boxing gyms, right. probably so that you could use them. <laughs> I mean, it, it's really not that impressive. You would be you could donate so much more yeah, money no, than that. I mean, could. we just donated fifty thousand dollars, obviously like raised with the help of others, but our employees, our business, you know, we did all the work behind it. And that was just for a small period of time. He did $25,000 to... Tie a salute. Yeah. I mean, you're Logan Paul. No, it's true. You owe so much more to the Puerto Rican community than no, that. That's like the absolute bare minimum. And it looks very much so like you're just trying to do it to keep, get people off your back because you are living there uh, and you're clearly making more by living there. Yeah. Oh, that's one thing Philly it's brought like, up. He was like, okay, so how much do you think that people need or that you should donate in order for it to offset the amount of money that you're saving? And he was like totally dodged the question. He's like, well, that's a hard question because are you talking about money? Are you talking about my time? He's like, I've only been here for a year and a half. And then he literally was like, help me help you. No. Like basically two Puerto Ricans. If it like, really help me help you. meant anything to you and you appreciated the land that you're living on and the people who live there yeah. you'd be doing a lot more and it would be very obvious i will say and again not that i'm a fan but i'm sure there are tons of people who moved to puerto rico for the same reason are having tax cuts and probably not donating a cent so yeah i mean and would he be donating a cent if he didn't have public pressure know. about right. him living there i, I mean no he idea. knows that there's backlash so yeah. 
that's why he's doing it to try to like, well, I do, I do this and I help. So right. fuck off basically. Well, you're saving a ton of money by living you're, there, you know, evading taxes. So you're making a lot more by living there. All of that money that you are saving should be going to Puerto Rico in some way. Yeah. They live in like a, the, you guys are saying $15 million home. Something like, like that. Yeah. 13, 15, something like that. I Huge. mean, I would think you would be able to donate more than $100,000. Yeah, clearly if you can drop five mil on a fucking Pokemon card. That yeah. Yeah. Is, are you Crazy. serious? Yes. That's nuts. Isn't that nuts? And he wore it around at his fight. It's like oh, a okay. chain for him. <laughs> what? <gasps> yeah, man. Yeah. That's absolute. Well, and then he bought one. <laughs> he bought a fake one. Remember that? No. He bought like a, uh, he spent a ton of money on a box of fake cards. Like they opened it up on camera and it was like G.I. Joe cards oh or something. God. And they were all so big. Wait, stop. That's <laughs> yes, really funny. Okay, look it up. You've got to see this. Oh, it's on camera? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Bought the Pokemon case for 2.7 million. He then sold it to me for 3.5 million, but he's become a close friend. And I could trust that he'd refund me if things went wrong. If we crack open that case tonight and inside are just a bunch of what do you do? Well, we know it's not because we went through a uh, security check okay. in Philly. Okay. We just happened to go in a government building. We know it's not. Yeah, yeah, we know it's not. <laughs> the reason why I was mostly concerned was because the person who brought it to me, he had so many inconsistencies, so much inconsistencies in the stories. It was like three, four different stories. That was my issue. Okay, now let's try to find the part. The guys where from find BBC. <laughs> The Pokemon card thing is so crazy. I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 Oh, no, no. Why is it bending like that? Why is it bending like that? What's inside of him? The music. Mother 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 It's f***ing fake, bro. It's fake. The BBC guy's like, fuck. <laughs> He's like, shit. I just look like an idiot now. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's open a box. Oh, yeah, right? Mm. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Look at this bullshit. <gasps> Why doesn't this one say first edition on it? Oh, no. That, yeah. No, That's not, like this. Not, like not like this. Not like this. I could have sworn there was G.I. Joe cards in there. <laughs> I might be wrong on that, but I could have sworn I remembered <laughs> that happening. They stuffed the I think when they box. open it, it is. I'm pretty sure. God. Oh my God. Yeah, they're G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe? G.I. Joe? G.I. Joe? It could have been anything else. <laughs> <laughs> the music. <laughs> okay, so. All right. Clearly, if this dude has that much money to drop on fucking Pokemon cards, he could do Damn a it, lot right. more for Puerto Rico. You're right. Um, which, what the hell is going on with these Pokemon cards? This is so insane. This, I mean, this has been going on for so long. Oh, yeah. These fucking cards. Do you remember what a big deal it was when we were in school? Oh and yeah. Kids were like, her, like attacking their teachers for. <laughs> it was a big issue. They were completely banned in my elementary school because they were. Yes, yeah. there were kids that were physically attacking their teachers for taking away their Pokemon cards. It was wild. Damn. And to see the hype just getting more and more and more, I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not a Pokemon card expert by any means, um, but, but yeah, apparently they're worth, worth a lot. lot. Yeah, shit. Oh my God, I never... Well, you can well, tell yes. them now, like those original cards. Oh, now, yeah. Like, they're going for... Yeah, I mean... You saw. Millions. Mm -hmm. Man... Well, I don't know. Well, shit, nothing for him. Mm -mm. He's got, but yeah, I agree. If you can buy millions of dollars of Pokemon cards or spend five mil on a Pokemon card for your fight, you can probably afford to spend a little more than, you know, 125,000. Yeah. yeah. And you'd think you'd really, I mean, it just shows what a shit these guys do not give anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when with that. They are just like completely comfortable calling out a, rapper musician. yeah a huge celebrity who is from puerto rico I know. and trying to call him a hypocrite when you don't even have your facts straight and I you're know. just comfortable just throwing but, that out there let me just attack this person i mean it's really so dumb <laughs> i'm not but, surprised yeah are you surprised no, no i'm not, not it, just, it just gets worse with these guys yeah it does
But they so, just keep getting bigger and richer and I mean more famous. Play your cards right. We'll get box seats to fucking Floyd versus yeah, or, play uh, your cards right. <laughs> Make sure you don't have G.I. Joe cards. cards. Right. Yes. <laughs> versus Tyson and Paul. Woo. Let's mm. go, baby. I would love to see it. Me too. I'm gonna be a nice end to the year. Jake just gets his ass completely handed <laughs> hey, to him. Hey, but remember by we thought that Mike he was going to get his ass handed to him by Floyd Mayweather and that didn't happen. Yeah, I know. That was quite disappointing. Remember we all watched that? Yeah. We were all on a video call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were all watching. We're like, well, damn. We're like, oh, this fuck. did not go as we thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. Anyways, that's going to be it for this week. Let us know your thoughts below. Would yeah. you spend a million dollars on a Pokemon card? I want to know. Pokemon. <laughs> my dad calls it Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay. Well, that's going to be it for this week, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Be sure to go to milehighmerch.com and check out some merch because we have restocked and yes, yeah. um yeah, we're working on a new collection too right now. Yeah. So. Oh my god, I'm so excited for the new yes designs. It's going to be very really good freaking cute oh and we didn't even mention why curly wasn't here today oh yeah sorry <laughs> so sorry you guys we didn't even she hated us and left yeah <laughs> she, she quit no she is actually visiting her family in mexico right now so mm-hmm. she will be back next week. week yep thanks for filling in zip yeah no nope. good Probably. job Sid. <laughs> all right that's gonna be it for this week thanks for hanging out with us we'll see you guys on the next sesh but, but until, until then, then keep, keep it fresh, fresh.